So when I was uh, probably like 15, 16 years old, um, I was very, very big into jazz, okay? You know, it actually turns out that when I was 18, I auditioned for the New York City uh, jazz band. It was like uh, you play at Lincoln Center, Carnegie Hall, and there were 500 applicants, meaning 500 piano players that tr tried out for this. I actually won. I became the piano player in the uh, Old City. It's called the Old City Jazz Band. So when I got a chance to play at Lincoln Cent Center and, you know, it was a big honor for me. And um, But that's not what the story's about. <laughs> so anyway, um, I had a buddy of mine, Joey, from Brooklyn. He's a drummer. So Joey loves jazz. Like, that's all he's about. It's just jazz. I mean, he likes classical music too, you know, but he's primarily jazz is his main thing. So at the time, jazz was my main thing too. You know, I was really into just jazz, like Chick Corea, Herbie Hancock, you know, Miles Davis, John Coltrane, you know, McCoy Tyner, just to name a few. I mean, I could go on and on and on. So anyway, Joey gets us a gig, okay? We had, um, you know, again, it doesn't really make a difference, you know, you know, about race, but we had two African-American. One was a saxophone player and the other one was a trumpet player. It doesn't make a difference, but I just want you to understand the band, okay? Then we had, you know, me, Joey, we were all Italians. Uh, Joey's a, an Italian drummer. The uh, bass player was Italian, and then me, I'm, I'm the piano player, I was Italian, right? So the two African-American musicians, which were very talented, one played the sax, you know, the tenor saxophone, the other played the trumpet. He had a mute trumpet. The man, guy sounded like Miles Davis. They were very talented people. So he gets us a gig at a place called Lorderbax in Brooklyn. I don't know if you ever heard of it before. I believe it's in Bay Ridge. I mean, we're going back many years now. Okay, so when, um, you know, he tells me, Rich, I got us a gig. I'm like so excited because this is like, you know, one of my first gigs. And I'm like, man, this is great, Joe. You know, he's like, yeah, man. You know, We were so excited, you know. So I get to the to Lord of Max, I walk in, and it's like there's like bikers, like you know, like you know, like Hell's Angels. The whole bar was filled with guys. They had like those jackets on, you know, you know, with the name of their like, you know, like gang or whatever it is, like the Pythons or whatever. And uh, you know, guys got like long beards down to like their friggin' stomach, long hair, and um, they had like heavy metal music playing. I actually think it might have been like um, like Slayer. It was some crazy, kill your mother, kill your father, kill your sister, kill your brother, like some crazy music, right? And it was just a whole bunch of like, it was like out of the movie, what's the, the Sons of uh, Anarchy, right? You know what I mean? It was, out of, it was out of like a scene in Sons of Anarchy, right? The whole bar was filled with bikers. So I walk in. And Joey walks in with the, the musicians, and they looked very intimidated, the two <laughs> nice African-American young boys. They were like, so I look at Joey. I'm like, Joey, I'm like, we're going to get killed, bro. I mean, we can't play jazz here. They're playing heavy metal. They're playing Slayer. But you see, you know what's good about this? Joey taught me a very valuable lesson. And you know what? If it wasn't for Joey, I don't think that I would be the man that I am today. You know, he's also the reason I met my wife because he, well, we were in Bay Ridge one beautiful, magical night. My wife uh, was at the Salty Dog, or at the time she wasn't my wife, right? I didn't know her. I didn't, you know, we were meeting for the first time. She, um, her ID was fake. You understand? Her ID said something like, whatever, like uh, her name was like uh, Diana or something, but then she had a chain on that said Jennifer. So the bouncer said, You out. And when she was walking down, uh, you know, 75th and 3rd, I was coming out of judge and jury. She was with her friend Rosanna. I was with my friend Joey. Joey started picking up Rosanna. Then I started picking up Jennifer. And hey, history was made. She became my wife. But getting back to Lauderbox. Okay. So Joey taught me a very valuable lesson. Richie, just be yourself. Don't worry about what other people, he kept saying it to me, don't worry about what other people think about you. You be yourself. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be myself. I'm going to be dead. We're going to get killed, right? So, you know, they shut the jukebox off. Like, again, that was playing Slayer, Nuclear Assault, like some like, crazy, like, you know, they did Metallica, you know, the who, who the belts tolls. It was like, it was literally like a heavy metal bar with bikers, 
So we go up there, we start playing the song, So What, you know, by Miles Davis. And like, I see this guy, he gets up off the bar, right? And like, he walks towards us. And there was like an older woman that was like, I guess like one of the bikers, like girlfriends or wives. And she walks towards us. So I'm playing the piano. I'm like, we're dead. That's it. We're dead. It's over there. The guy's going to kill us, right? And the next thing I know, you see the old woman that, that was with him, this old biker woman. She starts dancing. I'm like, I'm like wow. They like it. <laughs> you know, then all of a sudden, we all just looked at each other and we were just like, yeah, baby. And we had a great night and they started buying us beers. I mean, they actually liked jazz. They like, but you would never do it. So the learning experience I got from that, never judge a book by its cover and always be yourself. Okay. <laughs>